All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's Marshall Atkinson again with another edition of Forward Progress, which is my Thursday interview show. And today I'm so excited to have uh, Janine Edwards with Fruit of the Loom Jerseys to talk about all things apparel. And uh, so how are you doing today, Janine? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me on the show. I really appreciate it. I think that uh, you and I, of course, have have worked together on Shirt Lab and uh, Shirt Lab Tribe, and you've helped us out with our adventures in apparel decorating. So you know, we kind of have a good thing going here. So we yeah. do have a good thing going, and thank you so much for doing all of that and being part of my, I guess, uh, commercial enterprise ecosphere, whatever you want to call it. Right. So uh, right. But so if you're watching right now live, uh, we would love it if you would just share who you are and where you're watching. And uh, this is a question and answer show. So we've got some topics that we want to, mm -hmm. to do, right? But uh, Janine is happy to take your questions. So if you want to know about something or whatever, type it in and that way we can share it with Janine and we can have that as part of the, uh, part of the episode. So uh, make sure you do that. Uh, and Cora says hello from Centuria. So Cora watches a lot of stuff. So thanks, Cora. And she was, we tried to get uh, her on this show and we had some technology issues. And Cora, we need to reschedule that. Okay. So I'll look for an email from me. I've been uh, totally blowing that off and I need to get back with you. So I'll be doing that soon. And uh, Dan Solomon says, hey. Dave Eggers from Milwaukee says, hey. Keith Burwell from Northern California says, hey, so good job, guys. Thanks for sharing. And um, so let's get into some topics. And then mm -hmm. you guys uh, need to uh, sh uh, ask some questions in the middle here. It can't just be me and Janine. We want to help you. That's the whole purpose of this. So um, are you ready to get going, Janine? Sure. All right. So let's talk apparel trends. What's around the corner, Janine? What don't we know yet? Well, there's a lot, unfortunately, we don't know. So unfortunately, we, we have to talk about the COVID impact on the industry because, you know, it caused a lot of short-term delay in terms of product introduction and innovation in the industry. So, you know, you're going to hear a lot of people say that 2020 was looking like the best year they were ever going to have. It was going to be a, you know, home run year and everything. And then, Pretty much everyone you talk to says, and then March 16th hit. It's yeah. like that week hit, and suddenly it was like, ooh. And yeah, that's when the NBA canceled their season. You knew it was for it was serious, right? Yeah, that's exactly. That's when you knew it was serious. So right. um, everybody seems to point to that week as the week when businesses, unfortunately, started, you know, contracting. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, from our perspective, you know, we, like everyone else, you know, we did have to shut down our production facilities. Most people don't know that Fruit Loom and Jersey's, we actually own and operate our own facilities, primarily in, in Honduras and El Salvador. But, you know, this pandemic is global. So things did have to be, you know, shut down. But, you know, we recovered. We got it back up and running. So we're back, you know, into making production. Um, so there's been a short term hiccup in production. Um, but, you know, at the point in time that that happened, we were also sitting on top of, you know, millions of dozens in inventory that we had, you know, didn't they didn't have an order for had mm -hmm. yet to, to any of our distributors had to ship, had yet to ship to the near our customers. So there's still plenty of inventory. But, you know, if you're looking for, let's say, white fleece, anybody white fleece? <laughs> yeah, white fleece still, is going to be. It's still hot, Janine. Like it's, it's still hot. hot. White fleece is the face of the sun right here in, in Arizona. I think it's like 112 today here. So yeah. we're not looking white fleece. You're not looking at white fleece. So you know what that does mean is that you know, like key colors and high volume styles might be a little problematic. So if you're a decorator, you're going to need to get creative. If somebody says they want black and you're looking in black and that style that you want is not available, look and see if there's a black heather, look and see if there's like a charcoal heather, you know, offer up some alternatives that are in that style, that are in that fabric that you know that you like, you've tested, you know, has reduced risk and offer that up to the customer in, instead. So, Right. And would you say that, you know, maybe one distributor is out of it. Maybe you have to go to another one to find those mediums or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to get creative. Fortunately, most decorators that, that I talk to out there, they use more than one distributor. Um, you know, they use a couple, uh, maybe three, you know, there, there's always the primary, the secondary, and then there's that backup backup. And it could be that the backup backup, your more regional um, distributor actually has the inventory that you're looking for. So, you know, right. So now we're kind of past all the negative stuff. Um, now we're going to talk about color. We're going to talk about trends. And it's actually easy to talk about color first because color is the easiest way to kind of update a program. And new color in a style that you've already used and a fabric that you've already used can be a safer bet for decorators to use um, than, you know, kind of sometimes going to a new style. So color is always significant for our industry because, you know, color is what really drives a lot of purchases. Somebody comes in and says, you know, we're the Greenwood High School and we need to have green and it's this color green. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of know your colors and, and the brands that are out there. So um, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm going to, you know, sometimes I'm technologically challenged here. Right. So sharing my screen and kind no, of your, your presentation went away. So oh, did it? what we worked on earlier before the show somehow uh -huh. got, uh, is missing now. So all right, well, uh, let me see just if I follow can. the steps that we did earlier and we'll get it back up. <laughs> all right. So uh, let me go. And while she's doing that, I'll say hello to somebody. So uh, Kisa is from Kyle, Texas. She's here. Patrick Watson. What's up? And, uh, and then Cindy is watching from YouTube. So thanks, Cindy. Okay. Right. So Janine has her thing ready. Wonderful. Can and you so see what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you're going to, it's a presentation view and I'm going to make it full screen and take the banner down. Okay. And then you can just talk over top of the presentation and everybody's looking at it. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, so this is the color trend that we started out with for 2020 and 2021. So it started out with lots of, you know, what I would call upbeat, feel good, mid-tones and these nostalgic sun wash colors, lots of yellows and oranges and mustard is not going to go away anytime real soon, guys. So, you know, that is, that is going to be almost, it's, it's almost becoming a neutral color for a lot of grounds. If you go into like some Kohl's and Target, you take a look at some of the retail programs, some of the table t-shirt programs, um, you see still a lot of mustard that is out there. Um, there's another big trend on earth tones and other muted neutral. So oatmeal, not just for breakfast anymore. <laughs> And for this fall, you'll also see a lot of what I would call Carhartt type brown. Um, but this is pretty much the, the color that we kind of went with for this year and for the first part of 2021. So there's, um, you know, you have uh, a lot of these, you know, these um, minty blue, these minty greens, and you have these muted blues. Um, some of them kind of are almost like a technical or a digital, you know, teals and greens are out there as well. So um, two other color trends that we probably need to bring to the forefront. Most decorators probably have already experienced this. But the first thing is the color is becoming more gender neutral. So pink isn't just for girls anymore. Guys can wear it as well. Various shades and hues. Um, and secondly, color is becoming more transseasonal. So it used to be that you knew when fall was hitting because you would walk into a store and suddenly it was all brown, forest green and maroon. Um, not anymore. So, you know, that is that is something to 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 know about the color. So this is the color that we've we've looked at. Now, I will say that in the last four to six weeks, one of the things that we've observed, and I do not have a slide on this, so I apologize, is that people are using color to lift themselves mentally in this current situation. So we're seeing very bright yellows, very bright royal blues, you know, poppy reds, we're seeing a lot of that, you know, come to the forefront as well. So um, we're seeing that in retail programs. But, you know, these days, anything that occurs in retail um, occurs in our channel, you know, the decorated apparel channel almost just as quickly. So. And so when you say uh, 2021 color evolution, is this stuff available in January or is this stuff available now? We actually do have some of these colors already available in some of our programs. So like, for instance, mustard is a color that we have in both the Fruit of the Loom Iconic t-shirt, as well as the Jersey's Premium Blend t-shirt. 
Um, the mint color is something that's actually, we've had that for the past year or so. We have it available in the Fruit of Loom HD cotton t-shirt. Uh, we've also got a variation of it that I'll get to here in a minute that we have in the iconic t-shirt. And we've also got it available in the premium blend. So most of these colors that you see here, we actually do have available or they will be available in January, 2021. So. Yeah, and so Cindy uh, posted a comment. We do mainly schools, so black and white and red and white are colors for us. Well, I can tell you, Cindy, that's great, but sometimes because they're always using the same color, when you throw in a pink or maybe a, uh, a gray or some other, uh, just a graphite or something that's not the same, you're gonna get a lot of traction because it's the same print, but now it's on a different colored shirt and that makes it instantly new and it's a great way to update your online store. Yeah, the other thing that you can take a look at too, so like if red is one of the school colors, you know, take a look at doing a red heather. Um, you know, we have a number of different red heathers that we have in the product line, uh, or also we actually have in fleece, we actually have a red and beige stripe pullover fleece hoodie. So you can still use those school colors, but a different interpretation of the textile sometimes works to, to give them something new that still kind of looks familiar. So, okay, cool. So the second thing is, da, 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 da. oops, I got these out of order. I'm going to have to go here. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so tie dye is not going away anytime real soon. You're seeing tie dye masks, hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts. Um, but in some cases, it's a more muted version of tie dye with these more complementary and compatible colors. So, you know, like the old tie dye that you had in the 1980s, which is kind of like that center jersey sweatshirt that you see there. That's the bright blue, the bright green, the bright yellow, the bright pink. That's kind of like the tie dye style that you had back in the 1980s. What we're seeing now is a lot of like this is Kel Kalini K. She's a YouTube influencer. She actually took our Fruit of the Loom um, navy sweatshirt and sweatpants and did a reverse bleach tie-dye job on them. And that's how it came out. And she just loved it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And if you do that on black, it actually turns a little brown. So that's it's kind of almost camel looking. And she, she just used uh, diluted bleach and different strengths for different colors. Yes, that's all she did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then some of these others are, you know, the Jersey sweatshirt that's up in the right hand corner is kind of a tie dye job. It's a single color tie dye job um, kind of going clockwise. The one that's at the bottom, the guy, the blonde guy is actually wearing what we call a crystal wash. So it's a white uh, Fruit of Loom soft spun T-shirt that is actually been um, single processed with some, you know, some dye and then there's also they call it crystals but i think it's kind of like styrofoam pellets and something like that, that they use i am not as knowledgeable about all of these processes as i should be so if i've got it wrong i'm sure somebody out there is going to tell us about it and then um the one in the middle is actually that's actually a fruit of loom underwear t-shirt believe it or not that's actually been tie dyed with a, a couple of just single color processes so um so tie dye is is still going to be there um, fortunately, if you're a decorator, you don't have to do the tie dye yourself. There are a number of other brands out there that offer tie dye. We actually, believe it or not, do supply the blanks to some of those brands. So you're still getting our product. So that's kind of the reason why I'm, I'm you know, not embarrassed to put a plug out there for it. Um, the other thing is black is still going to be, I don't have a slide on this, but black is still going to be the most popular t-shirt color out there. But, you know, consumers are going to start gravitating towards more colorful offerings in tees um, and sweats just to help with the mental and physical well-being given all the stress that we're under with the current situation. So don't be surprised if you have somebody who's always bought black come in the store and suddenly it's like, Mm, we're thinking mustard. So, you know, just, just be prepared, just be prepared for that that uh, possibility, so. And then, or you can say, somebody goes, well, what's new? What's different? What's trendy? And then now you know, and you can offer stuff that is actually makes sense, so. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's trends. That's what I had to talk about on trends. Okay, so are we done with the slides? Uh, well, we're not done. Yeah, we're kind of done with the slides for this for the moment. Okay, so we'll go back to just us. How about that? Yes. All right. That'll be fine. Right. Hey, we're back. 
<laughs> so I had a couple of comments I want to show real quick. So okay. Dan says, uh, do you use silicone ink for uh, those athletic garments? And uh, Cindy says, would you like to add some charcoal and Heather's pink is a big no, no too close to red. Mm -hmm. Those, these big shows are big rivals. Uh, I guess that's Moho or Mojo. What are the two in Broncos? Right. So, um, but that's okay. So thanks for sharing. Appreciate that. So the next kind of topic that we want to talk about is this one, which is masks and t-shirt availability. Is this a competition? What's going on? Cause not just you guys, but every other T-shirt manufacturer is big into making masks. And all we're hearing is, sorry, there's no shirts because we switched to masks. So can you address that? <laughs> for sure. I can address it from, from our perspective for free limited. So um, we actually have a plant that's in Morocco. Um, Morocco is where most of the product for our European market is actually made. And that's where we actually made the masks. And we are still making masks for both the Europe and the U.S. market. So when we take a look at our particular situation, we didn't cannibalize our teas and fleece in order to make masks because we were, were making the mask over there. Um, and teas and fleece are primarily made in the facilities that we own and operate in, in Honduras and, and in El Salvador. So what did impact us, however, was the fact that, you know, just like with every other business, you know, you had to shut down, you had to do the deep cleaning, and then you had to re-strategize, for instance, our sew centers. You know, the sew centers had to be relayed out. You know, the sew operators, you know, had to be, you know, at least six feet away from each other. And so, you know, we had to move, we had to retool the floor, if you will. And so what that means is that, you know, and in, in you had to shut down the the production facility clean and then you had to basically kind of relay out you know your your sew operators and so you know then you cut you get back up and then you get back up and running and so we are back up in production now um are we at the full capacity that we had before all of this started no because we still have that social distancing that has to occur in the plants and you know for instance even in our distribution centers you know, people don't think about that, but the product comes in and, you know, we actually have to social distance in the distribution centers as well. So it's it's when it comes to our particular situation, you know, we didn't sacrifice production because we were making masks. We were sacrificing production because it was the right thing to do, given the health crisis that that was occurring and to make sure that, you know, the environment is safe for our employees um, going forward. So. Well, thank you for clarifying, because I think there's a lot of misinformation in the market right now about that, because all we're hearing is no T-shirts, only masks. Yeah, right? and, 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 and I can only speak for our particular um, production, our supply chain. I can't right. speak for the other brands that are in the marketplace. Um, right. but they have had a very you know, different situation. So. Sure. Well, I appreciate your viewpoint. Thanks. And uh, and the masks that you make. Uh, mm -hmm. those are like for a private concern. You're, you're not selling those, right? Or am I got that wrong? Well, we, we actually are selling them. Um, you know, at the very beginning, we had a significant size order for um, the U.S. government, for the Department of Homeland Security, for FEMA. Um, that was a big order. And that was a, an order that had to be spread across, you know, like us. Haynes Brands and a couple of other people that are a couple of other brands that are in the industry in order to supply all the masks that was that were involved in that order. Um, you know, once we got past that, uh, then, you know, we started manufacturing masks. So, for instance, right now you can purchase our mask at SNS Activewear. Um, also, they're available at Mission Imprintables. Um, they're available at, at a number of other distributors. They're in white and they're in black. And we also have an adult and we have a youth. So. And is that the over the ear kind or? Yes, it's over the ear kind. So it's a three ply cotton jersey mask that just, you know, loops over the ear. It's very simple. You know, it's it's a face covering. And because it's three ply, it is, um, you know, it's it's more of a secure face covering perhaps than some of the single plies or just, you know, like I see a lot of people, I'm in Kentucky. So I see a lot of people wearing the bandanas, you know, it's, the yeah. bananas are, are uh, probably the, the least safe that you have. So. Yeah. And does this have the nose bridge part? Because I wear glasses, and if it doesn't have that, then my glasses steam up. 
Yeah, it does not have the nose bridge, and I, I share your pain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, that's all good. So let's move on to your favorite shirt and why. Okay. So, so you I actually have the reason, a couple of the reason I wanted to ask this, Jean, sorry to cut you off. The reason I wanted to ask you this is because you see lots of shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and I want to know just what do you like? What is your favorite shirt? That's just yeah. Well, first of all, speaking from you know the female perspective, you know, finding the right shirt is incredibly challenging. You know, men's t-shirts are a lot more standardized in terms of size. You know, the same chest width and body length you can find on most of the brands within, you know, within our industry. When it comes to women's t-shirts, you have t-shirts that fall into the junior category. So they're typically slimmer, much, much slimmer. And they're also longer. Um, you know, they're made for that teen tween body, if you will. And then you have um, Missy Tees. And then Missy Tees can go anywhere from like a classic fit to a more fitted fit. And most of the distributors, most of the brands that are in this business are really good at, you know, everybody's got the size chart. So you can see what the chest width is and the, the body length of the garment. That will tell you a lot. Um, and then also most people have come up with some kind of a simple diagram that will show kind of like, this is, this is our most generous shirt. This is our, you know, a regular shirt. And this is our very slim fitted shirt. So, so it can be difficult from the, from a women's perspective to find a shirt uh, that actually fits you. Now that said, I do have a couple of show and tells. So. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> so my first shirt is my personal favorite shirt and I bought it on vacation. It is not a shirt that is a Fruit of Loom or a Jersey's brand. It is a, an Ace USA. You're not going to get in trouble like that, are you? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I bought it because um, I really like the screen print. Yes, I bought it in Yellowstone and it was a cute bear and he said anything could grow the green leaves on a white background. So I bought it more for the print than I did for the shirt. I was willing to sacrifice a little bit of iffiness on the shirt and the fit because I really, really, really like the print. So Yeah. And is, are you a purple gal? Is purple your color? Yeah, I, I, I tend to stay in the purples and the blues and the greens. So now that said, the next shirt is actually doesn't fall into that at all. <laughs> the next shirt that I really like is from an industry perspective. This is actually our, um, and you're not going to get a, a good look at it here, but this is our Jersey Snow Heather shirt. So it's got a V-neck, so it's a more flattering neckline uh, for most of us. It's a Snow Heather fabric, so the fabric shows some nice texture and has some interest. And it's not just a flat solid tee. Um, and it's also got a classic fit. So it's sized appropriately for, for most ladies, you know, so it's yeah. going to, it's, it would not, it doesn't have what I call a relaxed fit, but it does have a, um, you know, a, a good retail type fit, you know, for, for most women. So. Right. And let me tell you, uh, I'm wearing a snow Heather. This yes, is, I know it's that. This yeah. is my favorite shirt. It's from Shirt Lab Portland, mm -hmm. uh, which you went to. And right. um, so uh, it's my favorite shirt. And of course, I, I have a couple of these because I put the event on. And so uh, I wear this shirt all the time. And it's so soft. It's been wa I've washed a million times by now. And uh, I'm a, if you haven't met me in person, I'm kind of a big guy. So I'm 6'5". And uh, I'm wearing a double X and it fits me great. And uh, I really love it. And uh, it's just, it's just a fun shirt. And mm -hmm. the other thing I like it is I'm also an ex art director and I love mm -hmm. the texture of it. And when we designed this print, we purposely didn't print an underbase on it. So the texture of the shirt would more distressed because we just did it with one pass through a higher mesh. And that mm -hmm. way we get the, the texture showing through because I like that because it's fun. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I think a decorator spend lots of time trying to be opaque when you don't necessarily have to. If you could include the shirt texture in the print, it, that's that vintagey look, whatever, and it's easier mm -hmm. to print it. I think it's a higher perceived value to somebody looking at it because they kind of like that kind of thing. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't just actually distress it with the little holes or anything. I just, it's just a flat, but one hit. And right. um, so I, I think this type of shirt, you know, uh, Ash, you know, has the same little flex. 
you know, oatmeals, uh, you know, the oatmeal we were just talking about, does it have the mm -hmm. flex or it's just a solid yeah. oatmeal color? No, it actually has the flex in it. Yes. Yeah, I love the flex in a shirt. I also like, sometimes you can find the, you know, the micro stripes, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any of those textural things are really cool, so. Right, yeah. All right, and uh, well, we had a comment. Um, Cindy says, I love V-necks, also like the Snow Heather. I did some of your retro Snow Heather sweat tops, very classy. Oh, thank you, Cindy, appreciate that. Yeah, that's great. You. Yes. So is, is show and tell over, Janine? Yes, show and tell over. <laughs> Okay, so our last our last thing is new products, colors, and styles to get excited about. Okay. And it looks like your presentation went away again. Maybe the, the app. So I'll, I'll go back. I'm, I think I'm kind of getting the hang of this. So, okay. you know. So new products, colors, styles to get excited about because right now, Janine, we all need some excitement in our lives, I think. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> um, all right. So let me share this. Hold on. All right. I got to do my part. All right. Okay. So you've got control. Go. All right. Wonderful. So, you know, COVID, like I mentioned, COVID has had an impact on new product launches. So, you know, everyone is trying to retrench to try to sell, conserve the cash, especially as businesses are so tight. So right now, one of the things that decorators will probably see is, you know, some of the new product launches that you, chances were you probably didn't know about anyway. But, you know, the new product launches for this fall probably got shoved out to like January 2021. So we're going to see that, I think, um, just as distributors and, and brands, manufacturers try to, to manage the inventory level. So but uh, one of the things that we actually did launch at the beginning of this year, and I've got to say, if there was any year in which you should not launch a new product, it probably should have been 2020. Uh, <laughs> Who knew that in January, you know, so uh, we launched the Fruit of Loom Iconic Teas. So it fills the, the customer's demand for a ring spun tea program that's in a classic fit and lots of colors that's also at a value. And as you can see here, it's got also, you know, companion styles. There is a women's, there's a youth, and there's an adult long sleeve. Um, we did look at the market and we saw an opportunity to differentiate in color. So you have all of these colors that, you know, are running down across the bottom. The heather colors do kind of vary in fabric content. Some of them are going to be 60-40. Some of them are going to be 99-1s, for example. Um, but one of the things that we saw to differentiate with, and I'm going to see if I can go back up here. And by the way, while she's doing that, if you followed our Adventures in Apparel Decorating series, uh, this shirt was featured in the Tiny Little Monster episode. Yes, it was. Absolutely. It was Sloan. She did a wonderful job. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one of the things that we did with Iconic was we took a look to see like, OK, if you are looking at other T-shirt programs that are already about out there in this value ring spun segment, what are some of the colors that are on trend that are not currently offered that we could bring into our program to help differentiate it? Um, and so we've got some surf colors, we've got some resort colors, we've got some, you know, really nice earth tones that are in there. But one of the things that we also did was um, kind of these muted neutrals that are also over dyes. So we took uh, oatmeal heather, which is actually uh, 99.1, so it's 99% cotton, 1% black poly. And black poly is actually a teensy weensy bit more expensive than your regular white poly, which is the reason why you, you don't see a, a lot of black poly out there um, being used significantly. Um, but anyway, we started with oatmeal and then we over dyed it with this aqua velvet, uh, the candy hearts heather and the meant to be heather. So we got these really nice muted pastel colors to create um, something new that's in the marketplace that the decorators can can kind of play with. So, yeah, and that's your Easter palette. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, you you could. Yeah, the Easter bunny would fit right in here. We need to. Right. Well, uh, actually, I really back. like I really like these colors, Janine. I, uh, and uh, I think uh, is this only in women's or it, like the aqua or the mint? Is that in uh, unisex as well? That's in unisex as well. Yeah. Okay. And these are, you know, when you take a look at them and it may not, not be coming across on the screen, but when you take a look at that candy hearts, Heather, it, it is a Heather and you're going to see the, the blacks, the black specks are kind of, it's probably going to look a little bit more gray come out. 
So it is a very subtle um, effect. Uh, on the other hand, it's another way to add interest to what would otherwise just be a flat color. So Yeah, and let me tell you, I would so be basing down a white to do a vintage chalkboard look on, uh, on a print for one of these uh, to get that uh, the black heather pop through mm -hmm. the decoration. Uh, mm -hmm. And you could use a like a hand drawn font or some sort of real quick dirty illustration on that real big. And I think that's just a winner right off the bat as a one color. You could blow those out the door. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we actually take a lot look at a lot of the online uh, retailers like Jane.com is a really good one to, to take a look at and see what's trending out there in terms of colors and also graphic print styles, um, the trends, you know, because, you know, one of the things that we have to think about when we bring something to market is how is the decorator going to use this? And what are the types of prints or what is the type of decoration? What's what is what is coming new in decoration innovation that we need to think about as we're producing an apparel blank? So we, we actually, you know, kind of are somewhat methodical about that. So we we don't we're not actually just kind of got the dart barred up there and we're, we're throwing darts at it. Go, oh, I landed on pink. Great, we'll do pink. <laughs> so you know, we actually do take a look at like our history, like in a, in a certain color, like in pink and across like a classic pink and a cyber pink and, uh, and uh, you know, some of the other pinks that we have, how do they sell the seasonality on the pinks? So when we actually, because, you know, when we're actually making that color and style, we're making an investment in that inventory and it's not sold yet. You know, we've got to sell it to a distributor and then the distributor's got to sell it to the decorator. So we're doing a lot of, you know, kind of, um, you know, predictive intelligence, if you will, to understand like what's going to sell. So you don't end up bringing a color to the market and you sell it into the distributor and it just sits there, you know, because nobody really wants it. So, you know, that's, that's one thing that we, we try not to do very much. So um, then the other thing that's new, uh, this is a good one is the in jerseys we actually launched in January um, of last year, a premium blend t-shirt. We launched it in a limited color palette, but in August, 2020, over at the right-hand side, you can see all of these new colors we're launching it in. Um, so this is a 5.2 ounce, 50-50 combed ring spun cotton poly. So a couple of things to call out here. Um, at 5.2 ounces, it's got more coverage than most of your combed ring spun tees that are out there on the marketplace. So that means that this is, it's, 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 it's not going to fit as closely to the body. The other thing that we did is we put this into a classic fit. So, you know, basically how the shoulder has designed and how it fits to the body and the sleeve and the sleeve length and the, the chest width and the body length, it's all designed to accommodate the, you know, most body shapes that are out there. So, you know, we've, we've got one guy on the team, Jeff Train, you know him. He calls this the the best dad bod tea that we that any. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so it does, you know, and that again is is coming, um, you know, in 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 August. So those those colors are out there now. So hey, yeah, we're in August, Jenny. Yeah, we're in August. It's, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing now. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So we we'll go back to our big view. Yeah. All right, so I love that, and I uh, and so one of the things I think we need to be doing as an industry, so shops that are watching, is mm -hmm. if uh, take a look at these colors and see how they might fit with your current customers. Mm -hmm. And what I would be doing is uh, maybe order some samples in, right? Maybe you do a print with their logo on it, send mm -hmm. it to them, right? You, especially if they're you're printing for them anyway, right? Just put mm -hmm. in. The, the, the new, uh, you know, one of those new purples or whatever, the new oatmeal or whatever, right. and just see if they like that color and yeah. uh, just throw it in there and see if they like it because you never know because it's a new colorway to them. That might spark another round of orders. Yeah, right. It's an easy way of doing stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you can you can always start with, um, you know, one of the things that are like gold in our industry are, are our swatch cards. You know, the, the color cards that we hand out that have little fabric squares on them so everybody can see the color. 
So, you know, we have those at trade shows, obviously trade shows, you know, they've not happened. Um, but you can go to our website, jerseys.com or fruitactivewear.com. And there's actually a little form there where you can fill in and you can request a catalog and a swatch card. There's also a 1-800 number. Uh, I think it's actually a 188 number. Um, and you can call, Susan will answer the phone and you know, you can request swatch cards to be sent out to your shop. And if you need more than one, you know, go ahead and request two, three, five, you know, um, we don't have a lot of them, but you know, we, we certainly can share them with the customers. After all, that's why we produce them. So, you know. right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And uh, so now is the time for you guys to throw some questions our way. I think Cora's got one, but uh, please write in your questions and comments for Janine, because we want to make sure that any, if any question you have gets answered. Uh, so if you don't ask it, it's hard for us to answer it. So Cora wants to know, any other new body styles for women? Well, uh, in our line, um, we do have, you know, we've got the Snow Heather women's t-shirts that is a classic fit. We've also got a women's Razorback tank that's in that Snow Heather fabric as well. And I have to say on, well, on college campuses and sororities and, you know, that the, the resort area, that particular Razorback tank has performed very, very well. Is that like a three by one? Really? Yeah, it's, it, it's got a little bit more of a modified back on it. So it's not a real strappy racerback tank. It's, it's got a little bit of coverage. And it also is long enough to where it, it covers your butt. You know, that's the other thing is that if you're wearing it with leggings, you want it to kind of come down and kind of cover that area there. So we've got that. And then the iconic women's T-shirts. Um, that said, I will say that, you know, outside of our particular brands, um, there are other brands that are in the industry that also have other women's styles that you can take a look at. Like LAT, I think, does a, a lot of really good women's styles, and you can take a look at them. Um, J America is another one that has a, a lot of really good women's styles. So, mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. I don't see any questions. So uh, I've got some information. Uh, did I? Well, I didn't put it in here. So if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, Janine, what's the best way to contact you? Uh, probably through the 188 number that's on the website, mm -hmm. uh, which is, un momento. All right, so I'm back. All right. So the jerseys number is actually it is a 1-800 number. I was wrong. <laughs> How about that. Uh, it is 1-800-321-1138. Um, and if you need to reach me, um, you know, because we're, we're all working from home at this point in time. Um, but uh, you can call that number and, you know, kind of reach out. Susan, most likely is going to answer the phone. She's our she's our gal that is our, our front facing customer service person. Um, and she can take a message and get it to me pretty super quick. So, and are, are your reps, are they traveling around yet or are you guys all still locked down? Everyone's pretty much still doing, you know, virtual conference calls. So, for instance, one of the things that we um, have done with a distributor yesterday actually is that we went through sales training with our entire sales rep team um, with a, about four different meetings. So not all the sales reps were in the one Zoom call, gave them more opportunity to ask questions. So we've also done sales presentations to some of our other customers virtually. Um, I think people are getting a lot more comfortable with the virtual, you know, kind of this this interaction that you and I and the audience have at this point in time. Um, we, I, I don't know when we're going to get back to in-person account calls. So okay. well, that's fair. Nobody knows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait until we can get back to uh, just being in person and, hanging out and doing things. Right. And yeah, I mean, you just take a look at like, you know, for instance, like, was it at the end of January? We were at Thread X together. Yeah. Right. It was just January. <laughs> it just, uh, you know, doesn't that feel like two years ago right now? It feels like two years ago. And we were all taking moves and hugging and like, you know, trading information and we were all packed in and, you know, like, so um, this, this is really just a, an unprecedented time. And I think everyone's just trying to make it through as best they can. So, yeah, well, all right. So, Oh, Sean's here. Sean's awesome. 
He's a member of our Shirt Lab tribe. Okay. Thank you, John. So uh, thank you so much, Janine, for today, but also for supporting me with the Adventures in Apparel Decorating series. And if you haven't watched that, go to the Jerseys channel and look at playlists. Mm -hmm. And there's a, an Adventures yeah. in Apparel Decorating series. And uh, there's a bunch of fantastic content there. And we're still doing them. That's on a hiatus. Yeah. And we, you know, kind of mid-season interruption. And uh, we got a lot of really good things planned for season two. Just can't do right. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and then also thank you guys so much for sponsoring Shirt Lab. You know, you're yep. a, a, one of our premier sponsors and we appreciate you and everything that you do to help us get that education out. So always thank you. Well, thank you so much. I mean, the one thing that I really love about this industry is how collaborative everyone really is. Um, and, you know, the, the willingness to share information and share knowledge and expertise. And, you know, I think the, the Shirt Lab um, format and Shirt Lab Tribe is just the perfect type of way for decorators. Because, you know, most decorators, you know, they're, they're, they're small mom and pops in some cases. It's not like they've got like a franchisee who's coming in over their shoulder, who's telling them how to like run their shop and how to do things. And so, you know, you kind of learn as you go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and anything that we can do, whether it's electronically, whether it's, you know, a virtual conference or it's the videos or it's the shirt lab, we're certainly there to, to try to help and support um, education. So. Well, thank you. And uh, we appreciate you. And uh, for those of you who are not watching this live, you can still leave a comment. And uh, so whether that's on Facebook or whether it's on YouTube, we would love it if you would like or comment or best of all share and if you are watching on youtube please subscribe uh my son jack who's 16 just started his junior year of high school is my youtube master and he gets a dollar for every person that subscribes and so you're wow. helping him uh get that another call of duty game just by subscribing so please help my kid <laughs> and uh all right. Well, thanks, my everyone. Janine, don't go anywhere. I'm just going to end the show. So thank you, okay. guys. Oh, by the way, Cindy says, thank you. Great show. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you.